Hi again, everybody. It's Professor Lusheen, and this is week 10 for Safety 483-683. So this week, uh, I'm going to do a progress report, basically. I'm going to review some of the things we've already done, discuss it, interpret a little bit, give you some tips on um, creating better tables and figures, and then also about the technical report, because after this week, you should have a lot of it formatted. It should be pretty much two-thirds to three-quarters of the way done. Then after this PowerPoint presentation, uh, we'll go back to just looking at the Excel document and going step by step. And we're going to evaluate the policy class code and X and location. Neither is very good, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of guide you on how we're going to pursue this. I, I just want you to be able to demonstrate to me that you can focus on a few of the X and locations. And then we'll probably just kind of Set it aside and focus on causes. So we've got the accident description. We'll analyze that. It's pretty clean. And it's the same approach as the one above it. We actually stack them. So we use the same entries and just change the column. It's kind of, it seems like cheating. It's so easy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new cause code, what I call a parent code, which combines similar accent descriptions. And um, then we'll analyze that. What it does, is it's condensing things so that it's, you know, you kind of, it's, it gives you easier to prioritize. And then at the end, we're basically going to have our priorities set up uh, for what we're going to do next week. And I think what we may actually finish early based on the way I'm kind of looking at it now. So you have a little bit more time to digest it and put everything together for your presentation and paper. So here are the results of the descriptive table. I want to make sure that you see that um, I've made it, I've cleaned it up. And when I tell you to clean it up and organize, this is what I mean. To make it very presentable, that I've got the same size font, I've got it all justified the same, it's all center justified if you didn't know that, and that I am actually uh, providing details for what's here versus all the abbreviations we've been using. Um, I've got a table number beneath, and then I've got other information. I'm just trying to be as clear as I can with the, the reader. I also threw this uh, pie chart up here to represent open and close. That could be improved, most definitely. But this took a lot of time just to update all these things. Here is the distribution table. You see that I um, added more information than what we originally had. I put dollar values down here and gave it axes, titles. So make sure you're doing that. And we already discussed what all this stuff meant in a previous video. Here's when we were looking at the outliers for mine. I ended up deciding on 30. And so here's the original um, with the max claim of almost 320,000. Uh, the average is a little over 7,000. The median is um, just a little over 750. Removing 30, this is the change in the look. Some of you have said it didn't change at all, but you have to look at the axes. So the max claim is now uh, 19,800 basically. The average is 2,200 and the median is, is 680. So the average and the median came together, uh, came, came a little bit closer, though we know we don't have a normal curve but it's a much gentler curve. And so that's kind of how we ended up with it. And I've got 30 outliers removed representing just under $2 million, which was actually just a little over 71% 71% of all the benefits paid in this data set. So that's kind of wild. Here's a comparison of before and after. Uh, the top is the after, the bottom is before, and here's the difference between the two. So I'm just kind of laying it out there and you see that you know, I've improved these tables to make it easier to read. Here are the outliers that were removed, and I cut out some columns, obviously, for presentation purposes. So I've got the fiscal, I've got it uh, sorted by fiscal year. Uh, you'll see that I didn't discuss this before, but a, a decent portion, half, just about half, of the outliers occurred in 2010 and 2011. I'm wondering if that maybe the company got dropped for the four and a half years or the four or five years, which we don't have data, maybe they were dropped and then their policy was reopened when they were able to improve things because they kind of hit the ground running. It looked a lot better when it came to 17 and 18, 19. 19 was kind of a rough year, 20, uh, but we'll get into that. So we'll be digging deeper into these later on once we've completed our uh, where things occurred, why and how things occurred. Um, and looking back to see if there's similarities, differences, you know, what we'll find is, and we kind of, if you read these, that there's there's a lot of similarities, but I'll break it down from an objective perspective. They're all indemnity claims, obviously. I'm not going to go too much more into it. They're all the same policy class code as well, different locations. Then we did the trend analysis. We did with and without outliers. So here's a comparison of before and after. Here's a before and after. This was the biggest difference that 
Uh, due to outliers, expensive claims being in 17 and 18, it made everything look like, look like it's going down. We removed those, and now it looks like there's an increase in costs. So, um, but but look at the axes. So this went, the high here was 700,000. This is only 250,000. So it gives us some leeway. And then what? how do we interpret these? Well, the forecasted claims for 2023, 20, which is two years into the future, is 69. You can do one year, you can do three years. I chose two because it's between those. <laughs> I couldn't decide. Then what I did is I took the forecasted claims, which is 60 times 69, and then times by the average cost per claim. And this is just an estimation. So with outliers, it would be 491,000. Without outliers, it's 153. So that's kind of like a high and a low. If you if you know if we can't really take an educated guess on whether things are going up or down, this is kind of if it's staying kind of even with some wiggle. The forecasted total benefits paid with outliers is zero. I mean, it goes into it, it goes below the x-axis. So, but we, is it any good? The other one estimates the uh, that uh, in 2023 the annual uh, amount of claim could be 225,000, which is actually lower than what they've been. So let's look at some other data. And so these are the two fiscal years. And I didn't do this in the video. I did it as I was thinking about it today as I calculated the five-year average. Um, so this is 17 through 21, not 22. And with outliers, is that correct? Yeah, with outliers, 53 claims. So below the 69 we had estimated, uh, total cost 355000 Without outliers, 50 claims, 112,000, or actually 113 if you round up. So, what we, I mean, making things very simple with wiggle room, we expect there to be about 50 claims per year, three of which would be outliers. The annual benefits paid would be somewhere between 113 and 360. So, how, how does that you know match with what we have here? You know, it just, it just, I think it kind of just makes things a little bit more conservative, a little bit tighter in what we think might happen. I think that's interesting. As far as cleaning up your tables and figures, I was playing around and I found that there is a Microsoft Help tab. And um, go in here. They've got videos. They've got other examples. You can search for what you want to do. Make sure that you are for sure standardizing the font size and cell orientation so that you don't have things thrown all over the place. Some of the entries are bigger than others. Um, or a different font, that's weird. Don't use abbreviations, spell everything out. You know, increase the, the size of the column or do a text wrap if you need to. Make sure that everything has a number and a title. And then make sure that you are finding ways to be creative and highlight using, well, the highlighter or fill, where they call it, it's called fill. Um, objects, lines, arrows, all, everything you can do to just really identify key aspects of figures and tables. So like here's an example that just came straight out of the PowerPoint that I was playing with. And I'm like, boy, that's kind of cool that there's a, a chart up here and then down here they have a really interesting presentation with numbers. So it's like a, it's like dissecting a table and adding it to a figure. So this was just on the sample, the demo I did. And so was this one, but it allowed me to show you the deadlines that we just completed update two, update three is this week. And then next week we're gonna be doing the forecasting and estimated future losses. So we'll pretty much have our results. Week five is actually presenting the results, double checking our work, adding the comments and everything. And then that week after that, everything is due. And we'll do presentations, papers are due, and that's basically the, the last week of the semester. Tips for writing the technical paper. So this is going to be the, the lab three, so I have to do it later. Uh, because that week, I think we're gonna have um, some guest speakers from insurance. First is the executive summary, but it's not written first. It's written last, but it's put first. This is probably the only thing that the that managers are going to read. So it's built off of everything else you've done, but you have two pages and your your best figures and tables to educate management on. These were the highlights of the study. Here are some opportunities to invest in the safety program, and this is what's going to save the company if we can realize these these objectives, these recommendations. So that's what we're all working to. We're trying to get management to invest. I think that's pretty cool. Looking at the technical report, which you should be working on, there's the introduction, the methods, the results, and the conclusions. I provided some stuff here. I'm going to go over the introduction some more, but the key is the introduction builds up to the study is going to attempt to answer these questions. We can call them study objectives. 
and they were provided in the assignment, discussed them in lecture. You can provide them in whatever language you want. But the way you present them is going to be the map for the plan for how you do your methods and your results section because it's attempting to answer those things. So you, the methods, uh, data was in Microsoft Excel, the first step was to do this, and this is what we're trying to do. It doesn't have to be super detailed, but just give me an indication you understood what you did. The results, you've been doing it all along, and you should be building this already. And it should be something that hopefully, you know, the tables and figures are all letter, or I'm sorry, numbered titled, they're very clear, there's no abbreviations, it's all presented very professionally. Then we get to the conclusions. And the conclusions are taking what the results, what we found in the results in, in answering the study objectives and putting them into a narrative that this is an opportunity for management to invest and maybe comparing to some interesting insights you made in the analysis that you did on your own. Um, yeah, and then once you've written the report, you write the executive summary, pick out what you want. The technical report, first paragraph, you must set the tone. So don't distract. Don't um, start talking about something that's way different because you think it connects. Be very direct. This was a, you know, uh, I forget how it's entitled in the assignment that uh, you were asked to study this data to make recommendations or something. So put that together. So the first paragraph, state the purpose of the data analysis study, how the results will be determined, oh, how the results will determine priorities and opportunities for improving the safety program and saving the company money. Really, something like that. Don't take that word for word, but that's the first paragraph. The second paragraph should get into the scope and context. So some of the descriptive data, uh, something about the... Um, distribution. All that, those two steps help define the data set. We really didn't make any big determinations. It just kind of helped us understand to look at it differently. Go ahead and use that. After you've done that, you get into the background. And this is the, boy, I hope you're watching this because um, I'd like this section to be a little bit longer. If you go in there and I put on here, really challenge yourself to summarize workers' compensation systems, highlights pertaining to work comp claims, EMR, premium calculations, and references to pre and post accident assessments and value of early return to work. Do a really good job with that. If you ace that, if you demonstrate to me that you understand what workers' compensation is, some of the intricacies of managing it and managing claims and how uh, really defining how a company can save money uh, through proper management of proper medical case management, through engaging workers prior to getting it, all that stuff, um, so I really understand that you understand workers' compensation um, and how to do this analysis. You do not take the final exam. I'll just give you the grade you get on that. Uh, but that's only if you demonstrate to me that you really understand what work comp is. So this is my offer to you. Spend a little bit more time, start now, because uh, I'll be providing some insights during this week. Put that together. So you know, two and a half, three pages just on the background. Um, if I really feel like, yeah, you've done a great job, I'll let you know that, hey, you don't have to take the final exam and I'll just give you the score that you got on that um, for it. Because that's what you're gonna be doing in the final exam anyway, solving problems, interpreting tables, doing some calculations. And then state the objectives. These are in the assignment. Really state this, these are the questions that need to be answered in this data study. What's up next? Good, we're wrapping it up here. Uh, I'm going to review some company information. I did a bunch of work today and yesterday just to give you some insights, tying into some of the resources that we've had in this class. I put on your bigger picture and it is. Um, it's kind of interesting. And next is, then we'll, we'll get into, I'll just bring up the Excel. The, the policy class code, it really can't be used. It's just everything's put the same policy class code, 6504, and we'll look that up. We'll get into the accident location and realize, and I'll explain, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate to you. Sorry if you can hear that lawnmower right outside my window. I'll explain to you why having 89 different accident location codes is not a good thing. Um, and I'm gonna also show you how to use pivot tables. I guess I didn't put that in there. Uh, real simple, just, just, and it's just meant so we can capture everything very easily. I used to do it manually. Then we will move to accident source, which is actually a pretty good variable. I analyzed it, but what's kind of neat is 
the same table we create, the same entries we use for the accent location, we use it for accent source. It's just we have to change which column we're drawing things from. And then we'll do an analysis to set up our priorities. We use the Pareto, but we also use a natural break in the risk priority number. Then we're going to code a new variable that you, we can call parent code or new cause code. And I've created a cipher in the help document. I'll show you how to use it. And we'll create a sort of a condensed version of the cause variable. And then we'll analyze it the same way as the previous two, prioritize. Uh, then, at that point, I'd like to dig a little bit deeper in the outliers because we have the priorities based on those other three things. We're going to apply that same sort of logic. Is that the right term? Logic? Or something to compare to the outliers. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and I'm gonna, I may actually provide a paper to you, if I can find one I like that doesn't make me gag when I read it, on uh, SIFs, serious injury fatality. There's this idea out there in practice right now that the things that cause really severe accidents are not the same causal agents or features that cause the minor. I tend to agree with disagree with that. Though there are disasters that have nothing to do with minor injuries, I understand that, but I'm just saying that for the most part, for 99% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, they are related. Um, and you, you would take these other things into account differently anyway. They don't even fall under the same approach as when you're trying to prevent overexertion injuries, slip trips and falls caught and struck by. It's completely different. So why even compare it? It's apples to oranges. So that's what we have going on this week. Um, so in the next videos, uh, get ready. We're going to really get to the point where we're going to be pretty close to the end because then the following week we'll be doing the forecasting and estimating future losses and creating that final table. And that's where we're at. So, but then also I'll be providing some additional guest lecture content as well. So um, please join me in office hours uh, if you'd like. Otherwise, send me emails with questions.